From one of the world's largest aluminium smelters to a solar project, a country where entrepreneurship is thriving with a bold new infrastructure plan. Coming up on Marketplace Middle East, the Kingdom of Bahrain paves the way forward on a road to economic recovery. Welcome to Marketplace Middle East. I'm your host, Eleni Jokas, and this month I'm in the Gulf country of Bahrain, where I'm discovering a tiny island nation with big economic goals. Only a few months ago, the country announced it would invest $30 billion to boost its economy and clear its debts by 2024. It's an ambitious strategy to get Bahrain back to business after a roller coaster decade. In 2008, Bahrain unveiled the World Trade Center, a beacon for finance and trade and a symbol of the country's role as a leading financial hub in the Gulf. Bahrain's uh, very well-established regulatory framework it attracted a lot of banks to move to Bahrain. But only three years later, the wave of the Arab Spring hit this country's shores. Bahrain's GDP growth shrunk from over 6% in 2008 to less than 2% in 2011. Over the next decade, problems only compounded with collapsing oil prices and a global pandemic. With the volatility in oil prices after the oil price crash in 2015, there have been a lot of reforms to um, decrease the budget deficits. And then in 2020, during COVID, the economy contracted by 5.4%. But now the country is looking to reignite its economy, just recently announcing a permanent residency program known as a golden visa in order to attract top talent. The news follows an announcement in October last year for a $30 billion recovery strategy. Bahrain's government identified six sectors for investment and improvement. The kingdom is looking to diversify its economy, with oil and gas currently providing about 75% of government revenue. The main goal, to attract $2.5 billion in foreign direct investment by 2023. It's very ambitious, it's a very high amount of funding required, which is supposed to come from private investments. Some of the landmark projects include building five new cities and artificial islands, a trading zone with the United States, and a brand new 25-kilometer road and rail bridge connecting Bahrain to Saudi Arabia, the region's largest economy. Bold plans that will encompass all of the economy with the goal to bring Bahrain back in line with its larger Gulf neighbors. Jumana Karache, CNN for Marketplace Middle East. Geared towards diversifying the economy, Vision 2030 is all about investing in sectors like tourism, business services, manufacturing and logistics to boost growth. Each hall is about 10,000 square meters, as you see. To get more insight into the kingdom's strategy, I met up with the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism at one of the country's flagship projects, the Bahrain International Exhibition and Convention Center. This massive space is said to be the region's largest exhibition center when it opens later this year. Bahrain was already under pressure economically um, before the pandemic. The pandemic brought along with it a lot more pain but the country was already on the path of trying to diversify away from oil and gas do you think that's actually doable if you talk primarily about diversification it's not new to us uh, we've done it before before oil we didn't have oil we were a pearling nation we went from pearling to oil to industry to banking to telecoms and and i'm sure we'll find more and more as we go along i think the biggest asset in bahrain is the bahrainis themselves we've always received people from all over the world so i think tourism for us is, is, a, is a normal evolution we launched our first tourism strategy in 2016 and we managed to double the, the gdp contribution of that sector uh, 2016 was four percent of gdp and now you've got targets to 11 and a half percent by 2026 yes absolutely i think it shows with the amount of money you're investing in all your projects that you are absolutely confident about the future um you mentioned stability and i think we, we're in a time where, right now where we're seeing 
uh, instability emerging, potential instability because of the provocations that we're seeing coming through from Yemen specifically targeting uh, the UAE. Does this worry you at all in terms of executing on your plans? I think when you when you start talking about economic stability and planning economic reform and all that, it's a long-term journey and it's not something that should be swayed by uh, events that happen on the way. You have to remain focused and you have to remain committed to the long-term uh, target really. So when we plan something, we plan it for probably not even our generation, for the next generation. Uh, what happens today will not happen forever. After the break, I'll show you around one of the world's largest aluminium smelters. We'll hear from the CEO behind this operation, and it's right here in Bahrain. Stay with us. As the sun sets in Seoul and Shanghai, deals are signed in Dubai, and Europe is already in play. New York prepares to make its first move. I'm Julia Chasley, host of CNN's First Move. I'll speak to newsmakers, risk takers, and the ultimate game changers. Bold moves, big deals, winning trades. It's all right here. Make CNN your first move. First Move with Julia Chasley, weekdays. Welcome back to Marketplace Middle East and this month we're in Bahrain's capital Manama where we're discovering how a plan to put the country's economy back on its feet is impacting entrepreneurs. This is actually my favorite part because it's the most automated part of the production process. 29-year-old Faisal Khalife is founder and managing director of Bahrain's very first solar panel company. This is the essence of the solar panel. This is where the energy is generated before it goes out into a full solar energy system. Solar One produces about 60,000 solar panels in a year. It is a small but significant step for the startup. This is the final product here, right? Yeah. These are solar panels that are ready to be... Yeah, these, these are going out onto a tissue factory, actually. Bahrain relies on oil and gas for its electricity supply, but it still has a long way to go to diversify its energy mix. 83% of the country's energy comes from natural gas and 17% comes from oil. But renewable energy is a fundamental component of Bahrain's economic recovery plan and Tamkeen, a semi-government agency that is helping startups grow in the kingdom, thinks it's a lucrative sector. Renewable energy is one of the key sectors that are growing in the region. Uh, GCC is one of the uh, most energy-rich uh, regions globally, and that drives a lot of interest from governments to support the growth and development of any activity in this sector. And definitely manufacturing of solar panels or anything that has to do with renewable energy is considered as a priority for us. All of this is good news for small businesses like Solar One, as the government sees entrepreneurship as pivotal to the country's economic future. A significant amount of the capital came from Temkin. They gave us in total 
If you include the award money from our award for the startup of the year, about 190,000 US dollars. So that went but there's still challenges ahead. Faisal says Solar One currently imports 100% of all their raw materials as they need to be certified internationally, something Solar One hopes to change going forward. It just feels good to be part of uh, Bahrain's goals like with, uh, with their renewable energy targets. For now, it's assembly only, but Faisal is not deterred with the hope that one day his product will be truly be made in Bahrain. One thing that is made in Bahrain is aluminium. And it may be hard to believe, but this tiny country is home to the largest aluminium smelter outside of China. Alba produced over 1.5 million metric tons of aluminium in 2021. And in this reduction cell behind me, that's 957 degrees Celsius. Alumina, which is the powder, is being transformed into aluminium. I caught up with the CEO of Alba. What is it like being in an industry that's dominated by China, that controls over half of global supply. Nobody can compete China. China producing more than the half of uh, the total production of the world. And uh, any change in their growth, it will affect the market directly. But I think there is uh, a strong demand in the market. Our aim is not to build a refinery by our own or to control the refinery. We still, our focus is to produce aluminum, but we want to reduce the risk of the supply by having a minority shareholders in one of the existing refinery. And Alba's ambitions keep growing. While expansion plans for the plants are being cemented, the CEO gave me a sneak peek into one of the working smelters and how aluminium is made. That's amazing, what are we seeing? Here, what you can see in high level, how we are converting the alumina to aluminium. One of the most important things when it comes to making aluminium is the heat, right? You need a lot of electricity and I can feel the heat emanating in this, in this line. How are you planning to get around the climate change issues? The smelters is very uh, energy intensive and we are uh, producing electricity through the natural gas. We know that there is an issues about the natural gas. We are in the ASI, we are certified as a green aluminium. However, there are a lot of challenges to reduce this number eight to the lower numbers. That's why we are putting a lot of initiatives to be more green, to tackle all the aspects in the future. Well, that's it for this edition of Marketplace Middle East from Manama, Bahrain, as the country gears towards a new future that isn't relying on oil and gas. If you'd like to hear more on our stories, check out our website. From me, Eleni Jokas, I'll see you next time.